Hi, good evening, guys. We have Mr. Liam Bailey with us. He's an experienced uh, professional photographer out of London, uh, England, uh, who concentrates on corporate business and industrial sectors. Essentially, he works with clients to produce effective communications, marketing and sales materials that focuses on businesses, on a business or organization staff. This often means uh, shooting not only portraits, but also images that, that illustrates a particular working environment, whether it's a laboratory, a shipyard, or a boardroom. I've known Liam for almost uh, 15 plus years. Uh, we generally meet once a year, at least at one of the CPIC organizations, even at PACA at times. Uh, so welcome, Liam. How are you doing? Oh, hi. Yes, good. Thank you. Um, I hope you're well over there in Mumbai as well. All good, sir. Thank you. We're all locked down. Uh, like everybody else in the world, most of the people in the world, and uh, coping, slowly coping through this. How are you doing otherwise, your family, kids? Yes, well, we're very fortunate. We uh, don't live in one of the big cities. We live in a little bit outside, uh, so that gives us access to parks and, and a bit of freedom, and we've got a garden. Mm. Uh, we're very fortunate. Luckily, none of us have... Uh, come down with anything too serious. I think it I might have come through me already, but um, I, I got it quite mildly if I did get it a few weeks back. So uh, we'll see, you know, this is a time where you've got to make a new normal, as they say. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thanks, Liam, for doing this. Uh, I know you are very busy with your schedules as well, generally, and I would love to, you know, help our viewers understand how does a photographer, you know, uh, spend time during this lockdown and uh, I thought no better than getting in touch with you to see if we can get some effective communications going to our to our, our clients as well as our photographers. Thanks. Yes, it's a difficult time. Uh, anybody who does commercial practice or practice where you're out and about will find that they are now in complete restriction and it's likely uh, some research has shown that people's work has gone from uh, bookings between May and uh, July uh, having gone down between 80 and 100 percent. So we are looking at a complete and utter removal or de, um, de-working of those individuals during that time. Uh, depending on which part of the world you are, there's some certainly some uh, support for certain organizations, certain people. Um, we have some issues in the UK and I'm sure others do. Uh, creatives are not normally high on the list for support and uh, I think we're finding particularly here in the UK where we fall between a few cracks so as a as a working photographer now not working I have to then readjust my position to try and think either how I'm going to support myself uh, through other means or I'm going to be so prepared for when we come out the other side that uh, I'm going to be able to repair the damage quite quickly. So sorry, do you have any recommendations of what uh, one should do? You know, I, got, I did get a note saying, you know, how do you refresh your look at a professional infringements? Only they will take time to what they are worth pursuing and they can yeah. be in motion as well. You know, well, sure. I'm happy to go through a few things. So firstly, um, I think one has to think really what is the low hanging fruit here? What can you get back quite quickly? Are you owed any money? <laughs> Are those people able to pay you? Are you able to get advances on commissions that you've got coming up? Have you got regular clients who are, are possibly got you scheduled in for some work? Can you leverage their position right now and your position with them if they trust you to take some uh, advance payment? I have been very fortunate. I've got a, a, a large client at the moment that's running a, a basically a uh, a longer project and they have effectively uh, funded me ahead of that project with money now because they know that it's, it's going to be necessary for me to survive through that. So um, look at outstanding invoices, obviously grants and bursaries within your own country. Getty have a particular uh, grant at the moment for documenting COVID. Uh, there may be an opportunity for you to make a project which gets picked up quite quickly. There's a lot of uh, vacuum in the news and image areas at the moment. And if you can make a nice image project, you can bring a lot of attention to you, which may be able to monetize quite quickly. Mm -hmm. I certainly think that um, all those efforts that one makes right now are going to be dependent, of course, on one's ability to get uh, 
everything else in place. For example, I young family, teaching from home, uh, abilities to carve out time, abilities to carve out time in the mental space as well. There's an interesting statement by one of our good writers here yesterday who we thought being a, an older man who has plenty of time to himself, Alan Bennett, we would be expected to, from him to hear that he's been writing prolifically. Mm. But he really kindly said to us all, actually let us off the hook and said, um, you know, this time is for mind and body. And if anything else in between that can be completed or done, then we've got an opportunity. But really, I think you've got to only do what you potentially can do as an individual within this space. So don't beat yourself up if you're not doing everything at the, at the speed of light. Um, I think once you've gone through the really low hanging fruit, then it's sort of anything to do with things that maybe you can also take from what you've already done previously. So I have uh, an image business. I take pictures, I give them to clients, they license them, they use them. Sometimes I have a stock library uh, license model that comes through from various stock libraries. I have people buying individual works for walls and, and for artworks for um, interior spaces. I have people buying individual stuff because it, it reminds them of something from their past. For example, if I've done a, a particular project on, say, Bastonbury Festival or some of my footballs and things. So although there isn't a direct commissioning client out there for me, I think there are still there is still a client base and I have to work a little bit harder to find them. But I think there's also an opportunity for them now to go, oh, really, I didn't know you did that or I suspect I could do with that or that might be useful in the future. So this is the next stage of what I've been trying to do. And that takes a bit of an audit of what you're up to at the moment and, and your and your library. Have you got everything sorted? Is it keyworded? Is it available? Can you download it? Can you support it on a social network as well while you're trying to uh, market it and what sort of content is that so for example and here's a very simple example if you take Shopify out right now you can get a 60-day trial Shopify is incredibly uh, stable and international platform for selling uh, products and I can suddenly move all my pictures through uh, onto that platform through some other APIs into people who provide prints or provide form, that means posters, cups, mugs, you name it. I can find people to provide the services of drop shipping and I can create a store mm -hmm. in a day or two. And that is a really quick way to get your work out there to perhaps from a B to C audience, sorry, a B to B audience to a B to C audience. And I think that's an important starting point because it makes you feel as though at least you're achieving something by going out to find a new marketplace. I think if you've got a library that you've been shooting, personal work or other things, it's a really good time to go in, delve deep and pull out anything that you might be thinking be available for stock libraries, especially if it picks up on some of the key indices of the moment, you know, isolation, loneliness, future, uncertainty, um, crowds, lack of crowds, all these sorts of things are going to be quite important for uh, how we uh, define what we're doing in terms of stock. And then I think, once you've done a few things like that, had you look at your pictures, had a look at your social, try to think about what products I could produce. I would really then start looking at maybe doing something routine every day because you could get quite caught up in trying to do everything at once. And I really think, and this is particularly something which I, uh, I have had to do because I'm quite scatterbrained. I, oh, look, that looks good. I'll run over there and chase that or I'll chase that. And actually by putting some structure in today, I've really enjoyed doing that. And one other thing is called the hour, the hour to hour. So you, de you dedicate whatever you've got during that day. Say you were allowed three or four hours or six hours, or you want to give yourself eight hours. You don't want to do a full box set that day. It's a, it's a rainy day. You want to give yourself six hours. Cut them into six hour pieces. Give yourself a cup of tea or a walk between the hours and define only one subject matter to do in that hour. Don't think of it as a more for six hours that you're going to sit there. Six single hour processes. And for example, here's some of the things I've been doing. So I've been upskilling on some image software, going through Lightroom, going through a bit of old Photoshop, looking at some backup softwares, looking at some new ways to uh, present stuff for print, yep. new form. Um, I've been refining my web presence. Maybe 
that gets a little bit left behind when you're shooting a lot and maybe you come back and you think actually you know what when I come back I don't want to be just that one thing I want to look to be a bit more diverse remember this particular system is going to take out quite a lot of other players unfortunately there's going to be a wastage model and so therefore when you come back if you're one of the people who survived and you can be a photographer when you come back from this you might be wanting to do a little bit more general practice because you might find there's more client bases for you I certainly think you need to build some social posts so that people are knowing you're still there, you're adapting to the system, you're showing a human side, and therefore you can build that. There's some good uh, models at the moment, Social Pilot and uh, Agora Pulse and uh, some of the other ones, Hootsuite, they're all offering special COVID uh, free 30 days or 60 days. And often if you go back after 30 days and say, I'm still working on it, they'll give you another 15 days. So I'm using some of those to to schedule and platform schedule. Um, this is where the stock stuff comes in. Have you got a good retouching agency or a good cutout agency or somebody you really enjoy working with? They may be quiet now and maybe a time to offer up some things to do, some cutouts or get some, get some uh, retouching done so you can hit that marketplace with some maybe more conceptual imagery. Um, photo contests, weirdly, there's millions of them about and they still exist online and actually they're great profile builders and also some of them have got good prizes. So wouldn't stop by not looking at some of those photo contests. Mm. Um, joining client platforms, I think, Avanash is a very important one because you know, you're know you like LinkedIn and things, you've got, you've got some time now to maybe connect with some people and talk about yourself a bit more, maybe be a bit more personal. Most of the advertising models you've probably seen it have moved towards us, us all being indoors. So why don't you, you know, suggest that you can move yourself that way? Upskilling your shooting practice, playing around with some of the things you never really liked doing, like on camera flash, off camera flash, all the sort of things that you find maybe a bit annoying, things you might find a bit hard to do when you're uh, actually in work practice all the time. I, I think researching a few project ideas is a quiet little thing with a cup of tea in the afternoon. Maybe, you know, think, oh, actually, I'd like to be a personal, I make a personal book or something. Maybe it's time I... I created this. And remember, when you come out of this, people are actually going to understand more about you as a photographer. If you've expressed yourself as a photographer during this time, it doesn't have to mean brand new work, but it might mean that they see you as a different person. You've come through, you've matured while this is happening. Your work has matured and you've shown their, your new projects. Um, learning about new ways to re regain control of your followers. You know, people... <laughs> People sort of throw things out there and they forget that people tend to like you for a little bit and then maybe not like you. So maybe do a little, little bit of a asking around, ask a few questions, you know, throw a picture out there and say, does anybody seen this before? Did they like it? Do you think it works? Maybe some of the more intimate uh, people you know, just to refine and research your, your audience a bit better. I would also say, um, you know, when these picture libraries are looking for pictures post COVID, if you can crack a picture that's going to tell this story and a library really could sell that out to an ad agency or globally, it could be a very big seller. There's one opportunity or two opportunities here to provide pictures that haven't been provided before, which really can express the human condition during this time. And if you can put that through in a set of pictures to one of the libraries, it's quite likely it's going to get picked up and be put quite close to the top of the pile. And therefore, at the top of the pile, it gets sold. So I think there's some, some, some solutions there to what you can do. Um, obviously, the other side of things is the, the checks and balances is always, can I you know, remove some of the costs, the studio costs? Can I uh, ask my association to uh, reduce the amount I pay each month to them? Are there some um, offsettings of future costs or costs that I've got now, like your mortgages or other things you can do? Because as I say, one of the big problems here is going to be the cash flow in the next few months. Because even if we start up again, that cash isn't going to flow even the last next three or four months. Mm. So uh, I think plan for a six month hiatus, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, that's great information, Liam. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, you know, you've probably thought through this in detail. You, you, you have a way structured. I've known you for years and I know you've, you've been a very structured way of doing business uh, and you bring a lot of creative side to the business as well. Do you, do you see the government, uh, the UK government help, offering help to the creative side of the business as well? The creative industry? <coughs> Any packages uh, that sort coming for you guys? 
Yes, there, there are practice. Um, so, um, so if you're sort of quite new to the game, if you, there's three sort of structures. There's a company ownership, which I have. I have a company. So I own that business and I effectively um, uh, am a director owner of that company. Then there's a company which has employees. Now that has been a furloughed scheme, which is giving those employees 80% of their salary during this time, which is incredibly uh, supportive. Uh, I unfortunately don't qualify for that because I'm a director of my own company, I'm not an employee. And then there's a freelance system which will kick in in June where they will be paying 80% of your last tax return profitability. Now, as you know, most freelancers try to make the most minimum amount of money because they don't want to pay tax. So the issue there is whatever they presented to the government last year, the government is now going to go back to them and say, well, here, thanks very much. Here's the 80 percent of what you didn't pay us last year. Mm -hmm. So there will be some things. There's some grants floating around from the Arts Council, particularly in the UK, but they're going to be really fought over like... Um, uh, between a lot of creative uh, people and certainly through the artists model. So I think people who are practitioners or, or commercial won't get too close to that. Um, I've set up a, a new platform for my work called ballstoallthat.com, which is where I've been photographing uh, age old balls and sports gear over the years. And I've sort of thought, well, actually, why don't I put this up? Do a little minimum viable product, do a bit of marketing around it and see if people like that. So. I think what you've got to do is you can't sit there and wait for this to come back. You've got to say, what have I created? How can that creation create either some, some income now or a, a bit of, uh, you know, kick up a bit of dust around me? Or when I come out the other side, will I be one of those faces that people will recognize? Will I've actually moved forward in my, uh, my proposition and my journey during this time. And that is really one of the, the main statements here. Um, I've spoken to quite a few people. I'm in the 50s. Obviously, I look about 38, 39, especially with the Zoom um, make yourself look younger thing. But no, I'm mid 50s. And unfortunately, I've spoken to people who are in their early 60s who have um, been in this career as well. And they've decided that's it. They're giving up. They don't want to be fighting this anymore. They don't want to be in a big uh, hellhole when they get out. So actually, if you're a younger photographer, if you're emerging, if you're wanting to change career, if you're wanting to leave a career that you're in already, you think, hey, this is the time to jump. Good time, good time, because there, be, there will be spaces, there will be gaps. Yeah, absolutely. You're making, you're making statements, which is very wise, because uh, personally for our business also, we are thinking now five years or six years ahead of time, what to do now. This, can we use this time for people to work from home? Since we mm. work in the creative industry, the security is an essential part of our retouching business and production business, right? Mm. And we're trying to make sure what do we do in place? Do we have proper contracts with our guys? So we are also looking forward and forward looking, in fact, I would say, to think what can we do if a similar situation arises again? This was, we were, we were all caught off guard with this. But now let's use this experience to make it that if this thing happens again, how do we move forward? And that's, you know, your, your points are amazing over there. Uh, there is, there is one, more, one more question I wanted to ask was, do you, do you see if clients are willing to offer you some, some projects, maybe in three months, six months, if they see some positivity, positivity coming out of it, would you, be, would you be willing to take some cash discount and take the money right now? and offer an, a services maybe in six months time, like an advance at a discounted price? Uh, uh, do you know what? That is literally market dependent. If I'm in a position where the cash has got to the point where there's, it's needed now, then obviously we're a market based economy and we'll move to that uh, market position. I, I've got a feeling also that there's some um, insecurities in the, commercial side that people are worried that they're going to lose their freelancers their creatives the people who are the interface between the very large organizations and the output of their marketing and in country states like ours most of the people who provide any of the creative content are, are normally small or even one-man businesses or one-woman businesses so i think it's very likely they're going to come out quite quickly and say look let's 
pump some money back into the creative sector and try and get them back up and running. Because if we starve that area, we really are going to have a very diminished uh, ecosystem for people to actually then create new ideas and new propositions within that. So I think there is a possibility that would happen. I have spoken to a client, and as I said, have leveraged that money out of a, uh, a job that's going to come afterwards. And, but I think we've got to be very careful here. We don't rush to the bottom. There is a real possibility that people then start really discounting heavily. And once you've discounted heavily, unless you've got a very, very good opportunity for market growth, um, and it's a quite um, difficult marketplace generally, you're going to potentially uh, cripple or, or, or decapitalize yourself long term. You know, I, I have seen the state, I've been following UK and US quite closely. We have quite a few customers from there, Liam, and uh, the way UK has gone in the last five, six weeks with the, with the COVID situation, uh, do you see an increase in the infections going forward? And, and in terms of businesses, so everything, our business is all dependent on on photographers, right? And photographers' business is all dependent on the money's coming in as well. Mm. Everybody's locked down and the infections keep growing. The lockdown will come continuously keep growing, right? The lockdown will keep on going. Do you see that like a three months, six months uh, lockdown? People keep saying that it's going to be a different world altogether in the next six months. And uh, it will take almost a year, year and a half till the time the vaccines come out. People are not going to be, you know, in a normal state of behavior in terms of spending money as well? I think once you've got um, some things coming back like sports and schools and things, you'll find that people will put it in their risk pocket like anything else. And certainly once you've got situations where you know people who have gone through the process and have um, uh, got better again, there will be some decoupling of that uh, feeling. However, you know, we are presenting ourselves here with really just the alternative, one alternative, which is a vaccine or something which on arrival at hospital will dramatically reduce the opportunity or possibility that you'll end up uh, in, 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 you know, a, a morbidity state. So if there's an intervention at that point, I think people will get out there because they think, well, if I get it, at least I've got, you know, 90% chance of surviving arrival in the hospital, even if I'm in quite a poor position or it'll be a vaccine so if you come to the situation where your uh, interiors or architect architect photographer i don't think you have any problems i think this people are going to go out there and they're going to be having to want to sell these big buildings and there's going to be a lot of churn in property and and stuff of that nature so you're going to get a lot of work if you're like me you're a people photographer then you've got to go in and, and create a video or some sort of marketing tool so that you can say to people how safe you're going to be your arrival your PPE kit yourself, your two meter distancing from your subject matter. There might be a lot more long, long lens work. There might be a lot more capture for people purely by automation. It may be that we are in a position of um, radical change and that we will be de, uh, we'll be de-jobbed. There will be much less photography. And if it is about certain things, it will mostly be done by um, computer generated or a certainly uh, assisted photography. Um, for example, in the film industry, they're thinking about shooting soaps with people two meters apart, but they're, by, they're building algorithms at the moment to make them stand only four and a half inches apart. So it's almost as a live feed. So the, the system is adapting, technologically is adapting to what is happening now. So we'll find adaptions will happen. Images might not be required as much and they might go, uh, you know, if I was in the market to get busy right now, I'd be creating a stock library because I think a lot of people are going to go back into hiring images and licensing images to get through the next year without having to do commissioning. So I think the commissioning side will diminish, hence having to go back and see, have I got a resource that could really be adapted for this market space? Yeah, absolutely. So see, adaptability is the key over here. You've got to keep changing your style. You've got to keep changing your thinking to make sure you survive in the market. That's what I hear from you. Absolutely. And I've, I've seen that doing that plenty of times. Liam. Uh, do you also see that's probably, you know, one of the last questions. I would love to do more sessions with you, Liam. I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of questions coming through as well. Have you even thought about probably doing, you know, a one-to-one -one session with any of the photographers who would love to learn some, have some courses? Do you, or do you suggest with any veterans in the industry, 
to to offer this kind of you know one on one service of photography classes or lessons well this is a very very interesting area the workshop and the idea of being a personal uh, coach effectively to uh, people emerging into the market space potentially people moving from other careers potentially very high earning individuals who now want to have a more lifestyle career or portfolio career I can see a very significant opportunity in there to work with those individuals either coaching them or working in small group coaching um, I think there is potentially more money in teaching what I do or passing the information on about how I do things than actually doing it. So that is an interesting sort of step. I think there's more people out there who want to do what I do, yeah. uh, who don't necessarily need to do it full time and for full money, who would be more interested in how to do it because they want to change their life. This is a life changing experience for lots of people and they won't want to go back sitting even if it's for a very good money behind a desk in a, a 14th floor of a building in Canary Wharf in London and spending the next 14 years trying to get out of that situation. Yeah. So I think there will be a lot of new emergent people who've said, I've loved this photography for years. I really want to do it. I really want to make it part of what I do. I'm, I'm happy to do other things because my income will drop. Maybe I need to be coached. So yeah, so let's, let's look at that. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure you'll be a great coach if you start that. You'll probably have one, one of me as your first, you know, <laughs> student to start with. I would love to learn some lessons from you as well. I'm pretty sure. Okay. But uh, Liam, I really appreciate your time. Uh, and I'm Go sure you have a lot of questions coming in as well. You could find uh, more about Liam at liambailey.com. You could also find more information about him. In our speakers list, uh, he has his LinkedIn profile set up there as well. A very interesting character. Like I said, I've known him for a long time and absolutely love meeting him whenever I meet him. So uh, thank you so much for your time. And, you know, Liam, have a great day. Uh, hope you stay safe with your family. And you, have Avanash. And safe, safe, safe travels to you if you get away soon. If not, then enjoy, the, uh, enjoy what you can. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have Take a good care. day. Bye. Bye.